Welcome to low-code application development with Oracle Apex. This video is a quick tour of the app builder. Hello, my name is David Peake, product manager for Oracle Apex. So I've logged into my Apex development environment and you'll see that there's these four major functional areas, app builder, SQL workshop, team development and packaged apps. At this point I'm going to jump into the app builder. And given this is a new workspace, I don't currently have any applications defined. I can either start by creating a new application, or for the sake of this video, I'm just going to install a packaged application. And I'm just going to choose Customer Tracker, install this application, click on Install Packaged App, and this normally takes about a minute or so. Obviously in this video, I'm going to cut out the wait time. So once it's up, I can actually run the application, but I just want to unlock it, and that allows me to actually view the application in the App Builder. So now I'm just going to go back to the App Builder, and you'll see that there's one application in here. From the App Builder itself, I can create new applications, I can import an existing application, I've got a dashboard, and then there's various workspace utilities, such as setting up defaults, REST enabled SQL services, and more. As with many of these pages, in the About section, there's a link to documentation about the App Builder. And then there's various tasks, such as creating an application from a spreadsheet. There's forms migration, where you can upload forms, applications in XML format, so you can review all of the trigger logic, etc., and annotate it to make sure that you don't lose any business logic. But let's go and have a look at this application. When you're looking at a specific application, you'll notice the screen changes. From here, I can run an application. I've got supporting objects. And in this one, you'll see that there's a number of supporting objects. And these are scripts that are used when you're importing an application or upgrading an application or, in fact, removing an application, which allows you to run any SQL script, which might be some DDL or DML, that you want to perform as part of installing the application. So, for example, I'll go and have a look at this one here, which is creating a package. And you can see that it's creating this package called EBACUST underscore FW. The next thing along is shared components. And shared components are components of an application that you define once and then you can use across multiple different pages. For example, list of values is a very common type of shared component, so you might define one here for activities, which is getting all the activities out of this activities table, and then you can use that list of values on any page, and in fact, you can see that this one's used on two different pages. There's a number of different categories for shared components, including application logic, security, other components, navigation, so for example, if you want to look at the navigation menu, then you can drill into the navigation menu here and see all the menu items that will be displayed. Then we've got user interface for when you want to work on the theme or the templates associated with a the theme. The ability to upload static files or workspace files. Then we've got things like data sources, reports and globalization. The next section over here is utilities. And from here you've got the ability to run the advisor, which is very beneficial to point out potential warnings or errors with your application before you look to put it out for testing or even to deploy it into production. There's the ability to upgrade an application from an earlier release and check results of things that weren't automatically upgraded. You've got various reports here, such as recently updated pages, change history, debug messages, etc., that you can utilize to see what's been happening with your application recently. And then other options here as well. There's also a number of paid specific utilities that you can access from this section here. Lastly, we have the export import. So when you define an application, it's defined as metadata in the Oracle database. You can then export that application definition and it'll actually save it as a text file with a .sql extension. You can read that with any standard text editor, and then you can also import that in, into any other Application Express workspace that has that version of Apex or higher. Below that, 
is all the pages within your application. So you'll see we've got things like a dashboard page, customer details. Uh, if we go down, you'll see that there's a number of different pages in this application. But I'm just going to drill into one page here, such as the customer details. This brings up Page Designer, which is a primary user interface that you will use to manage pages. So this is broken up into three major panes. In the left hand pane, we have the rendering tree, which shows you the components that have been defined for this page. And so we've got things like regions and buttons and items, etc. And you can see by the icon generally what sort of item they are. So you can tell that this one's hidden and this one's a select list, etc. The second one here are dynamic actions. And this page doesn't happen to have any dynamic actions, but they're client-side behaviors you can define declaratively. Then we have processing. This includes all the operations that are performed when a user submits a page. So there's various validations. There's a process that actually saves the data back to the database, whether it be an insert, update, or a delete. And then branches to go back to the page it's supposed to go to. Then lastly, we have shared components, which are those shared components I was showing you earlier that are utilized on this particular page. In the middle pane here, we have the layout and included with the layout is a gallery down below here. The layout itself gives you a visual representation of what the page looks like. So you can see that on this particular line, we have two items. We can drag and drop things around. So for example, I can put that down on a new line rather than having it on that line. I can also drag and drop complete regions, buttons, anything around in the layout. Down below we have the gallery and at the moment I'm showing the regions so I can actually take a region and drag it and drop it up onto my layout here. So for example I might want a calendar here, I can just drop that on the page here and then go forward with creating that calendar. I also have items so there's a number of different items that you can drag and drop up into the layout and then also buttons. The second component is the component view and in here you will see another representation of the page which shows everything broken down by type. So for example all the buttons are together, all the page items are together etc rather than being with their associated region and so forth. The next one across is messages and you'll see that I've got a few messages here from dragging that calendar in that it needs some attributes to be set. Then we have the page search and lastly we have help and help is associated with this right hand panel the property editor so if i select a particular component here it will show me the help for that particular component i can also drag and drop these around so initially when i'm first designing the page layout is very useful because it allows me to visually see the page be able to move things around once i'm finished with that i can actually take for example the help and I might drag that over here and then I can drag the property editor and put it right in the middle and this gives me a much bigger property editor but whenever I select anything then you'll see that it's actually changing the help when I'm doing development beyond just doing layout sort of work. So this concludes my video on the app builder so thank you for watching this video.